Today I get in your angry, hostile little faces. Come on, kill me, I'm here! Come on, do it now, kill me! Oh! You'll never have to watch another knife video again, ever. I mean, unless you just like knives. Today, and today only, we will remove all doubt. The mystery has been solved. What makes the best survival knife? Let's start at the very top, a Survive GSO 5.1. Why? Because it's expensive. They're hard to find in a highly exclusive knife. Besides that, quality is written all over this blade. It's got super steel. It's beefcake. It's got lots of super cool features like micarta handles, which are bulletproof. The knife is full tang. It has stainless steel hardware. Lots of super cool features like jimping, a ferrocerium rod cutout. It even has a hidden lanyard feature. Let's not forget the American flag made in America. Got the right grind. It's a saber, the best grind of them all. Bullshit! Let's not forget the fully customizable sheath that actually works. Tried, true, and proven by professionals in the field, it's definitely not this knife. Some people may be saying, let's get real, JJ. If it's not a Benchmade and the Navy SEALs don't use the knife, it's not a knife at all. Nope. Still other people are gonna say no, it's the Bob, the Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft knife because it has all the super cool features and it's made by Tops. Wrong answer. Some people are saying, how could you forget about the Mora Garberg, the coolest survival knife ever? I don't think so. Why would you buy an expensive Mora when you could have the cheaper version that does the same thing for a whole lot less? Negative. Some people are saying, that's right, you can't beat a classic. I beg to differ. The people that inspired all these knives, they used old hickory butcher knives straight out of the kitchen because they work. <laughs> oh, there's a lot better stuff out there now. How dare you not put an SCPR4 down on that table? Okay. Still not the best. Because bushcraft knives are the answer to all the world's problems. Sorry. I know what all the ladies are saying right now. Big knife, little dong. Small knife huge amount of confidence huge you got a bunch of wankers it's got to be even smaller why do you think they call me tiny maybe you're just tiny one cannot forget the kukri been around for 2500 years the best multi-tool on the market and it cuts the heads off of its enemies then why do they make other knives it's not actually a knife at all it's the machete no, no, no. It has to be a fully customized machete with all the features that makes you look super cool when you're cutting the heads off of zombies. Yeah, no. You know, the truth is I'm getting kind of tired of this because the truth is there's no such thing as the best survival knife. What truly matters in the equation is you. You make the best survival knife. I don't know, it's like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's hellfire, dude. Yeah, whatever. If one of you found yourself in a real life survival scenario, you would be more than happy to have any single blade that's on this table right now. There are pros and cons to everything. I can literally take any knife on this table, I could go out and I could make the things happen that I need to make happen. And I know this because I've done it. And you need to do the exact same thing. You can sit there and you can keyboard commando all day long and argue why this is the best survival knife, but the truth is opinions change and so do you. As you acquire skills, guess what? Your preferences change. It really doesn't matter how much money you spend on a knife. If you can't use it, then it's worthless. What really matters is if you have one or not. Let's take this gas station knife, for example. It has an okay sheath. Does it work? Yeah, it works. The blade itself, 440C stainless, the same stuff that they make your ball bearings and races in your vehicle. On top of that, it has G10 scales. It has some of the features of our knives that are more expensive, like jimping, like finger choils, lanyard holes. It has a swedge for fighting. Is it the best knife in the world? No, it's not. But will it work? Yes, it will. Does it have the best grind? Well, what is the best grind? What are you doing? Are you skinning animals or are you batoning wood? <gasps> he said batoning wood. Yeah, I said batoning wood. Contrary to what some people believe, you might actually have to do that at some point. You need to understand the tool that you're using. And that's really what matters. It doesn't matter if your knife is big or small. You're only going to be able to do a certain amount of things with that knife, period. These so-called experts out there, 
By the way, if they call themselves an expert, you should probably not listen to them. For every student mentality, that's where it's at. Every single time I go out, I'm learning something new. Or if I get around somebody else, I might learn a new technique. Just because the knife doesn't feel good in your hand doesn't mean that it's not a good knife. And just because it feels good in your hand doesn't make it a good knife. What makes a good knife is the time that you actually put in with it. Can you seriously form an opinion just because you saw a five-star review on Amazon? You do realize that half the time those reviews are fake. Half the time people get paid to actually put the review on there for you to read. It's not how much you spend. It's not the name on the knife. Look, the best thing that you can do is you can go find somebody that you trust that will help you to make an adequate knife purchase. Now understand me, there are a lot of knives out there that I will not use, and I'm not gonna mention any of the names. Maybe it's stuff that I've seen break in the field, or I just pick it up and I absolutely know beyond a shadow of a doubt this will not work for me. Those knives do exist. If you have a better argument, then I wanna hear about it in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and until next time, fuel those fires.